Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our New Orleans Bowl game preview between the East Carolina Pirates and the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with East Carolina. When you look at East Carolina's offense, you have to like the potential of the big play coming from their inside wide receivers. Guys like Justin Hardy, who's their leading receiver and has over a thousand yards. But when you look at Daniel Webster, he's Mr. Clutch, Mr. Third Down, keeps the chains moving with his work underneath. But then you go also on the interior with Justin Jones, big mammoth Justin Jones, 6'8", 260 pounds, works as their quote-unquote tight end. So you look at their receiving core all across the board, there's instant matchup problems. And the way they work them into the offense, opens things up for the running game. Ventavious Cooper is a guy that is a direct beneficiary of those guys on the interior and on the outside. So look for them to get him involved in the running game early and also work him in the passing game, putting the football in his hands quickly because he's that type of guy that can make one miss and take it the distance. Defensively, when you look at outside linebacker Darrell Johnson and his ability to disrupt plays will be vital versus this Cajuns offense. We know they thrive on timing, and if he can disrupt the timing and the rest of that rush unit can do that, they can have a lot of success. And it also helps out that secondary that has given up the big play time and time again. They're going to have to do a better job in competing and winning the individual matchups versus those wide receivers. Those guys like Jacoby Jenkins and Leonard Polk, they're going to have to have huge days versus those Cajun wide receivers. If they can do that, it can go a long way in helping East Carolina win this ball game. Now let's move over to the Raging Cajuns in this ball game. When you look at tailback Alonzo Harris, you look at the type of runner he is. He's a guy that gets stronger as the game goes on. And you look at how they can attack that East Carolina run defense. Look for him to have about 25 to 30 carries this ball game. That's how they're going to be effective running the football. But we know the Cajuns live and die by the big play in the passing game. And they have some speedsters out there on the flanks. Most importantly, Javon Lawson is a guy that could have a lot of success versus his secondary of East Carolina. That's going to be the matchup to watch how they move him around the formation and get him the football. Defensively, when you look at Emeka Onyekwu, you look at his athleticism. This is a guy that has tremendous range, tremendous burst off the edge. Six and a half sacks on the season 12 TFL. So that shows you right there that he has that closing speed to finish plays. But I think most importantly, the inside linebackers of this Cajuns defense will be important. ECU wants to attack the seams of the defense, the middle of the field. So these guys will not only have to do a better job in pass coverage, but they will also have to be gap disciplined in their run responsibility. So that all will alleviate a lot of pressure off Rodney Gillis, the outstanding free safety that does a great job of eliminating mistakes in playing center field, which is why he leads the team in interceptions. But the inside linebackers will be a vital part of the Cajuns' defensive game plan. Justin Jones is an intriguing prospect. He's an H-back, but also is an inside receiver. They flex him out a lot, which shows the athleticism that he has to operate in space. And when you have a guy that's 6'8", 260, that can move like he can, it automatically makes him a prospect. And he also has the skill to go along with it. This is a guy that has 14.3 yards to catch, so he shows the big play capabilities. They're going to have to call Louisiana DB University due to the fact that they're always churning out top DBs. And Melvin White is next in line. 6'3", 190 pounds, big hitter. Reminds me a lot of Ike Taylor when he came out of UL. A guy that is kind of raw but still has that big play potential and has the athleticism and the size that you want at the position. A guy that's not afraid to tackle and also has outstanding ball skills. Jeff Blake was a superstar for East Carolina. This is a guy that led that team to an 11-1 record in 1991, finished ninth in the country, and also led him to a seventh-place finish in the Heisman Trophy voting through 28 touchdowns, eight interceptions in his career. This guy threw one of the prettiest deep balls you'd ever find in football, period. And you can't talk about raging Cajun football without bringing up the greatest Cajun of them all. Brian Mitchell was a quarterback for the Cajuns from 86 to 89, under his leadership, the Cajuns never had a losing season, and he finished his career as an all-time leading rusher from the quarterback position. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to Orlando Thomas, one of the best defensive Cajuns of all time, played from 91 to 94 at the safety position. He was a hard hitter and also an outstanding center fielder, and this guy is suffering with ALS. Not only was he a great Cajun, but he's an even better person. 
I like the Raging Cajuns in this ball game. When you look at these two teams, you see explosive offenses. So the question will be, which defense will show up and slow down the opposing team? I like the Cajuns defense. The reason being, their secondary can't compete above the rim with the wide receivers, and they can also get pressure on a quarterback. So I can see the Raging Cajuns coming up with that one defensive stop that's needed to get the ball back for their up-tempo yet ball control offense. So look for the Raging Cajuns to win their second straight New Orleans Bowl.